I'm Rob McLean and this is Caledonia McBrain's, the show that's a test of wit, wisdom and mental agility. It's uh, an intellectual version of Kerplunk. <laughs> it was revealed this week that Harry Potter actor Daniel Radcliffe's voice broke during the making of the film. Apparently it was nothing serious, just that his philosopher's stones had dropped. <laughs> Former SNP chief Alex Salmon has admitted that his long-time ambition to play Star Trek's Mr Spock affected his performance as party leader. Apparently matters came to a head when he opened an SNP meeting in Kirkcaldy with the words, it's Fife Jim, but not as we know it. <laughs> OK, let's meet the team captains. On my right is Karen Dunbar. <laughs> and on my left, by a process of elimination, is Fred McCauley. <laughs> Joining Karen tonight is Scots actor Ronnie McCann. Ronnie's just finished a stint playing staff nurse Barney Wolf in Casualty. He was quite surprised to find himself on this week's show as he'd heard our waiting list stretched into the middle of December. <laughs> <laughs> Also on Karen's team is Jeff Boys, a stand-up comedian who, according to his press release, has just completed an exotic tour of the Far East, playing dates in the Hong Kong Garden, the Bangkok Pavilion and several other Chinese restaurants. <laughs> on Fred's team is children's TV presenter Sally Gray. Sally was a presenter on Linford Christie's Record Breakers and says that she likes to relax by watching her favourite dancing couple on video. Her favourite dancing couple being Linford running the 100 metres. <laughs> Joining Fred and Sally is author Jenny Colgan. Jenny is a million selling author and in fact Warner Brothers have just bought the film rights to her first book, Amanda's Wedding. They've promised they won't interfere in any way with the integrity of the characters in the book. So coming soon to a cinema near you, Amanda's Wedding starring Mel Gibson as Amanda. <laughs> Two of our guests have actually worked together on TV before, but for tonight's show, we've decided to keep them apart. Have a look at this. Good morning. You're switched on to Go TV. I'm Sally Gray. She's Scotland's first lady of television, and I'm Ronnie McCann. And he's he's just Ronnie McCann. So, uh, welcome to Go TV, the hottest, coolest TV show ever. <laughs> I think you understand now why we decided to keep them apart. Anyway, it's on with the show. Our first round is What's the Story? Fred's team, here's a piece of footage for you. Tell me what's going on. Out of the Murrayfield Tunnel for a tour of the stadium. I can still train with boys. <laughs> <laughs> Stealing the limelight with Scottish rugby internationalists. Her story's national news. I enjoy being here. I can learn a lot. It's clearly a girl that plays rugby. Mm. And I went to college with quite a lot of girls that played rugby and they did not look anything like that at all. <laughs> so I reckon, Rob, the story is non-massive, hairy, dyke-type rugby players. <laughs> can I just say, what are you saying here, girl? Because I used I know. to play rugby when I was a wee girl. I played with my brothers and I loved it. And I don't think I was ever yeah. a dyke-type. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And it was, yeah, it was great fun. Sitting in there, rucking with the boys. <laughs> I did say rucking with the boys. <laughs> Anyway, she's a beautiful looking girl. Maybe she's she could be the girl. Anna Kornikovia, whatever name is of the rugby world. Could be. Yeah? What? Not very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She wasn't allowed to play with the boys. That was the story, wasn't it? She came yeah, over, yeah. she wasn't allowed to play at Murrayfield. But... She is going to be the second most famous Swedish sportswoman in the world after Nick Faldo's caddy, Fanny Sunison. <laughs> and incidentally, for those that are interested, Fanny Sunison is uh, what people used to say when they phoned Ibrox in the early 90s. <laughs> The answer was in there somewhere. A point to Clan Macaulay. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
Yes, that was all about 17-year-old Swedish blonde Lynn Allforser, who was banned by the Scottish Rugby Union from taking part in a rugby match in Edinburgh. <laughs> Karen's team, here's a piece of film for you, and tell me what's going on here. Yes! Toasting their purchase, they were in no doubt it would mean better fortunes for the 110 islanders. This is lottery money that has been put to the land fund to help communities such as ours. <laughs> I've seen this. This is um, a story about the islanders who bought their own island. And that guy that was talking there is really called... His real name is Willie McSporran. <laughs> now, that's that his real name, Mr Willie McSporran. And uh, I was trying to think what the English equivalent of that would be. And what did we come up with? Bobby Bucket? No. Or, uh, <laughs> Maybe that was a good, handbag. Uh, penis pus and different things like that. Um, but did you see when they came round the corner, they all forgot to shout yes. They've obviously somebody said to them, right, when you come round the corner, everybody's get yes, and we're going to open champagne. They all come round and they're like, oh, what was it we were meant to do? <laughs> yeah, Karen got it right, a point to Clan Dunbar. <laughs> We get paid a lot for this show, and I actually thought about buying that island, yeah. but uh, it needed rewired. <laughs> <laughs> we obviously you know get paid different amounts then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about buying a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> but it needed rewired. <laughs> Yes, it's the story of the purchase of the Isle of Gia by its local inhabitants. The residents said they were delighted that they now own their own island as they can monoblock the main street and put stone cladding on the harbour wall. <laughs> Fred's team, what's the story behind this? Oh, big building. Looks like an office. Yeah, HQ. It's a big, big building. That's it. Tiny what building. is it? A little logo on the side there, perhaps, saying is it? BT, I think. Yeah. It's a BT building. Mm -hmm. um, BT told their salespeople uh, not to target poor folk um, because there was very little sales potential there. And especially, especially if you're trying to sell them a phone, you know, over the phone. <laughs> Hi, have you thought about buying a... Oh, you've got one. Right. <laughs> How could they phone them up to try and sell them a phone if they didn't have one, though? Hello, have you ever... Hello? <laughs> I can't get an app. Oh, they've not got a... Right. <laughs> Fred got it right. Oh, yeah. Yes, the story is that BT have instructed their salesmen to raise the quality of their customers by not contacting people living in what they deem poor postcode areas. From now on, they say they are only interested in customers who have a special device for answering the phone when they're not at home. It's called a butler. <laughs> Karen's team, here's your picture. What's the story here? What's that meant to be, a pigeon? I read this, they want to bring uh, pigeons into the Olympics or something, if I remember rightly. <laughs> pigeon racing in the Olympics, try to make that an Olympic sport and uh, other mad things it. like... Is it just me or would pigeons not have an advantage going over a hurdle? <laughs> <laughs> Given that they've got that... I think, I think that was an all-comers record for recaps of the correct answer. <laughs> You've got your point. <laughs> this is the news that the sports minister, Alan Wilson, has launched a campaign aimed at making pigeon racing an Olympic sport. He's convinced that uh, homing pigeons will continue in the best traditions of Scottish sportsmen and women who compete internationally at the highest level. They'll be flying back long before the event's over. <laughs> And at the end of that round, the scores are Clan Macaulay 2, Clan Dunbar 2. Yay! Yay! <laughs> OK, on with our blast from the past round in which we show our team some bits of old crackly film with questions to follow. Team Macaulay, have a swatch at this. Mason Boyne, he's a sport and a friend. He'll be true orange and blue till the end. With a shake of the hand and a kick in the groin. Mason boy, Mason boy, Mason boy. By the way, happy birthday. Did you get us a prezzy? <laughs> That's by the side of your bed. Great. Let me guess. A new sash and a box of orange creams. <laughs> Come here, you wee darling. Come here. Oh, I'm busy, Mason. Come here. No. Come here. Come here. Come on. 
Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Very appropriate there, a clip about a Mason ending with a handshake. That was Robbie Coltrane playing the character of Mason Boyne from the TV series Laugh, I Nearly Paid My Licence Fee. Talking of licence fees, the question is, what's the price of a colour TV licence and what's the price of a black and white? Oh, it's a 90, 90 <laughs> something pounds. £105, pounds I go for. I remember writing a five somewhere along the line. I pay by direct debit. As <laughs> <laughs> so just to show you that all these commercials weren't wasted. <laughs> Hey, mate. Direct debit. I think I do that as well. So you're halfway there with 105. It's 106. 109 for a colour. Okay. For, for a black and white. Maybe we should half 109 and see what that no. comes out as, no? no? I think it's something £6.50, is what I think. So I think it'll be £86.50 no, £86. or £76.50. £86.50. We'll not, not even close. If you're doing a blank, well, no us, points for that one. Clue. Come on, one more clue. I'm not giving don't you any. I love it when you're aggressive like this. I know, I can come right over and give you a one big scrum. That's what I'll be doing, but I'm wrecking you. Come on, one more clue. Was I too high? Give me one more clue. Are you like this on children's shows? No, of course I'm not. I do adult shows as well, you know. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Okay. I'm actually having a body experience at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking down on everything and my face is still here. Come like on, that. I'm not going to tell me why What's the answer? <laughs> Can you the answer? I think it'll be about... That's hardly fair. 60, 62 pounds. So you couldn't even read it from there? I couldn't even read it. I knew it, £36.50! We've got a yeah. It was a bold intervention, but no points. The answer oh, yeah. was £109 for colour, £36.50 for black and white. See, I told wow. you it was loud. Oh, that's all over. Karen's team, a somewhat unusual clip for you. And surprise, surprise, all those wonderful mechanical noises are actually made by the throat of the Reverend Andrew Dow. I feel in grave danger of being run over here. No, that's, uh, that's not the Reverend Andrew Dow at all. That's Ernest Bishop, who was <laughs> killed in a bank raid in Coronation Street and, and, and is masquerading as the throat of the Reverend Andrew... The throat of the, the, the Reverend Andrew Dow. It sounds like some kind of Ian Rankin novel, doesn't it? And they found a cube in the throat of... <laughs> Well, you'll, you'll be glad to know that Peter Purvis wasn't knocked down by a train. That was a curate from a church in Chatterton who specialises in imitating engine noises a bit like that, appearing on Blue Peter. And as you have an expert on children's TV on your team, your question is this. I'm going to keep going, even if it kills me. Name two former Blue Peter presenters who share their names with a type of food. Blue Peter presenters that share their names with types of foods. Um, uh, share the greens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Richard Richard Bacon is one. Oh, Peter, yeah. Peter Pudvy. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of general food. He was actually doing the noises to <laughs> the arse fish. of Mark Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Curry is number two. Oh, uh, well Where done. <laughs> Hang on a minute here, look, your man Jeff over there. What were you trying to do with your little mouth there? <laughs> that was rubbish. my taxi. Were you not trying there to do a trim phone? Why don't you just take over? <laughs> <laughs> trim phone. That's and it. I could go higher or lower, and I could do a full time whistle going back to the rugby. Well, story. You, what you could do. <laughs> do the trim phone again. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm too poor. <laughs> And the score at the end of that round is Clan Macaulay 3, Clan Dunbar 4. Yeah! Now it's time for What's Missing. We show each team a photograph with a vital element blanked out. All they have to do is tell us what isn't where it should be. Fred's team, what's missing here? Oh! Fred Macaulay, surrounded by another bevy of beautiful women. That's right, that was the, the final edition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you're sitting down in a very sort of old man kind of pose there, a bit too late. Oh, is it, man? It actually looks just a wee bit too lightly. <laughs> <laughs> See where the hands are. <laughs> but can you do a trim phone? <laughs> 
I think it's Henry McLeish, and they've just hired out an office, and he's, he knows nothing. <laughs> nothing. Another wrong one. I tell you, that is, that's Bruce Forsyth sitting waiting for his next wife. <laughs> Any closer it's, to an answer? Yes, we, we, yes, we know this one, I think, Miss, Miss World contestants are standing behind <laughs> Nelson Mandela, we it's think. Nelson Mandela. That's right. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> for, for students of trivia, you may be interested to know that this year's Miss Scotland, who's got a good chance of winning the competition, incidentally, mm. is called Juliet Horn. She's the first girl that's been a Miss Scotland in 17 years that hasn't been called Anne-Marie. <laughs> <laughs> what was missing was Nelson Mandela meeting this year's Miss World contestants in South Africa, and it was a real coincidence that all the contestants turned out to have the same dreams and ambitions as Nelson, doing charity work and achieving world peace. <laughs> Karen Steen, what's missing here? <laughs> Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Don't tell me this is another Doug thing. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's, I think that looks to me like a council worker with half a full bin bag. It's like buttons or something. They're take, you can take your dog and drop it off and they'll get taught to dance. Ronnie's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie's right. And I can talk in senses sometimes as well. Is, that, is it that for the, the holiday camp for dogs? It is indeed. Oh -ho! I don't know how they think that that's anything like pleasurable for the dog because if anybody's ever been pissed and went home and danced with their cat, do you know that way like that? <laughs> you come to dolls, you enjoy yourself at steps. Like that, and that's one. But you, you're not. That kind of takes the huff for you the next day. All you get is the back of its ass like that. <laughs> Feed me and don't talk to me again for the rest of the day. <laughs> that's, that's a, Karen, I've got to say, that's a skill you should keep off your CV. <laughs> right? Can impersonate cat's ass. <laughs> yes, the answer was Jinx the Collie enjoying his holiday at the Dog Days Activity Centre in Anstruther, Fife. Team McCauley, what's missing here? That's uh, Willie McSporran. <laughs> again. <laughs> We've just bought an island. <laughs> I think it's somebody saying, oh, no, don't take a photo. I'll just go put my face on. Oh. <laughs> somebody is enjoying their look. They're enjoying yeah. their hair. It's a bit of a wash and go kind of moment. It's more like somebody Sexy. took two bottles into the shower and drank them both. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's uh, Anne Whittaker. It is. She's just had a makeover. Yeah, she had a makeover. Hair. It's Anne Whittaker. But please, don't reveal it, will <laughs> <laughs> Do us a favour. Leave it like that. Be nice to her. God love her, but she's also nail varnished her hands to her head as well. <laughs> She'd never had her nails done before and they were just still dry and she put them through and went, oh, shite, the rest of the day. Yes, that was the result of Anne Widdicombe's makeover. Tory MP Anne bravely volunteered to undergo a complete image change on GMTV and after a two-hour session, she left the studio looking just like a film star, as those of you who've seen the movie Shrek will testify. <laughs> now, Team Dunbar, what's missing from this picture? Uh, a big crab's leg. <laughs> uh, what it is, is, um, is, is, it's a digger that's sinking into the mud. Is right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, what's missing is a caterpillar tractor. A forestry worker was horrified when his digger was sucked into a bog in a forest near Stirling this week. Fortunately, he wasn't hurt and he was able to radio headquarters to let them know he was safe using the forestry worker's special six-word code message, I'm a lumberjack and I'm OK. <laughs> what bothers me is that there must have been a guy standing on the digger on the other side taking a photo of him. <laughs> uh, here, you take one of me next. There, I'm the <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you captivated by the scoreline, it currently is Clan Macaulay 5, Clan Dunbar 6. <laughs> Now it's 
time for After Heather, a round dedicated to all the daft wee items they show at the end of the news. After Heather, the weather has told us how wet it's going to be tomorrow. Fred's team, here's your wee daft clip. Over 100 people flocked to the island to compete this weekend. It was the fourth year of the Good Humoured event, which was dreamed up by the 50 islanders to fundraise for renovations to their village hall. The competition is fierce, but so is the carnival atmosphere. And with such high natural talent, few bother to train. <laughs> what is with the folk freaks at the end there? <laughs> you know, a gathering's not a gathering until you put a poncho on, it. and then it becomes a festival. <laughs> Callum, festival. go and cut home your travel rug and put it on. Put your poncho on. <laughs> now we've got a carnival. Maracas. That's the people of gear, and that's all they can afford to do after getting the island rewired. <laughs> Uh, no. Nope. But what are they actually doing? They were skimming stones. They were skimming and, stones? Um, which is uh, BBC's main sport now. <laughs> That's the right answer. That was the World Stone Skimming Contest on the tiny island of Easdale in Argyll. The contest is held annually to raise funds to repair the town hall as idiots keep taking stones from it and throwing them into the sea. <laughs> Karen's team, here's your coofy little After Heather clip. OK, so if you're looking for a way to upstage Edward and Sophie, then this is certainly going to get a bit of attention. Fire leaves them in the house. They could be there in the special day, all dressed up and enjoying themselves the same as myself and my guy. And what does everyone else think about it? Absolutely nuts. Mental! <laughs> she is That's... absolutely mad. Look at her. You know what? There's not a lot of times that I'm speechless. <laughs> The woman's got her dog dressed up as Santa. <laughs> She's been tattooed as well. And maybe her crown's too tight or something <laughs> like that. Is it, is it Catherine the Great? I saw this, and this lady, good luck to her, cos I wouldn't want to fight her, but... <laughs> she's got her dog as a bridesmaid. <laughs> That's what it is. That would make some headline, would it, know that the, uh, at the end of the day, while the bride was taking her vows, the bride's made pissed on her. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, she couldn't help it, she was just enjoying herself. Can't agree, but like any other West of Scotland wedding, then. <laughs> The thing is, you're meant to have a bridesmaid that's a wee bit less good-looking than the bride, are you? <laughs> you know I what think... you say, always a bridesmaid, never the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff got it right, the story there was about the Scots girl who got married and had her pet bulldog as a bridesmaid, and fortunately the occasion didn't go quite as planned as the best man got drunk and copped off with it. <laughs> And going into the final round breathlessly, it's Clan Macaulay 6, Clan Dunbar 7. <laughs> so, fingers on the buzzers as we go into the quick fire round. Which Scottish singer had a hit with the Muckin' of... The Muckin' of Geordie's buyer, and it was Andy. It's no Cameron, Andy. Andy Stewart. Stewart! That's right. Stewart, yes! Correct. Yeah. 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 Which two stretches of water in Scotland share their names with an American crime fighter and an American gangster? This is probably completely rubbish, but I can only remember the two of them. Uh, the Dean of Dawn. No. No, nope. but the Dawn, for a Mafia gangster, Don, Don, one, Don. surely. Yes, come on. The we Don. need an actual name. Don Corleone. <laughs> <laughs> well rescued. You're halfway there for a Don Corleone. Uh, and the other one is for a, a crime fighter. Yeah. Clyde. Was it McClyde. Uh, McClyde. Bonnie and Clyde. Yes, Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, that's another one. Bonnie and Clyde. right. Yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 Why did the British Army start putting buttons on the sleeves of Highland military tunics? Do we know? To stop them doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer, right. <laughs> Which of these place names is not a town in Scotland? Moscow, California or La Mancha? Uh, La Mancha. It is wrong. California. It's wrong. Oh, Moscow. Moscow. It was a trick question. In fact, they're all places in Scotland. Moscow is in Ayrshire, California is in Stirlingshire, and La Mancha is in the borders. How tall was Mary Queen of Scots? Clandon <laughs> Bar. Quite tall. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> can I narrow you down, Ronnie? Yeah, okay, yeah, um, she was um, four, six. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Susie? Eight inches. <laughs> and a <Yep>. head off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're looking for heat on. Right. So I'll have to pass that one over. 4'11"? Is wrong. 5'11". Oh, that's a oh, oh, big one. With head attached. <laughs> Which of these well-known TV captains was created by an Edinburgh artist? Captain Mannering, Captain Peacock, Captain Pugwash. Pugwash is right. Yeah! 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 And Ronnie obviously knew he was created by John Ryan from Edinburgh. Which, I was going to say, but... I, don't, I knew you were. <laughs> <laughs> Which ABBA song mentions a place in Scotland? Glasgow. Oh, I'm glad you asked me. Glasgow. 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 Glasg